introduce uh, your lecture to those who could not participate at all? Um, well, my lecture was uh, about a uh, new approach of color in industry, the bioinformation approach, which uh, tries to assess all the histonatomic parameters, all the light interaction and natural structures, going really deep into nature in order to understand how it works, how light interacts with the structures, and take this knowledge and apply it to how we work with composites. So basically that's uh, our uh, way of working, and I show it through the different things and cases and animations in order to explain all this concept. What do you think is the most important moment of the direct linear technique? Direct linear. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, basically, I think it depends on the case. If it's a single linear case, then it's tricky because the shape is the most important thing. You need to really analyze very, very well what you would use uh, to, to make this linear, all the composites, your templates, your enamel. You need to really pay a lot of attention on the shape selection. Of course, all the steps are important, but I think that they, this is really the most critical of these cases. When you are doing multiple veneers, it's less problematic. The shade can be pretty standard, almost always similar layer. However, uh, you need to pay a lot of attention on the shape, on the form, so everything is symmetric. You don't create the severe symmetries. You play well with the spaces, the estimate postures. Playing well with the morphology. I think that uh, number one is morphology. And full uh, like front cases. Yes. Um. What is, what is your opinion on the different smile design softwares? Do you use uh, a software like this in your private office? For smile designing? Mm -hmm. well, uh, I think that uh, it's uh, something uh, relatively uh, important. So, because we've been always doing the smile designing by just WhatsApp and uh, doing the mock-up afterwards. So that was our smile design. Nowadays, you can plan in advance with uh, software. It's just something that can be useful with it, but uh, it's not critical in my opinion. I think that it gives you an extra, it gives you an extra plan that you can send and the technician can use as a guide. But at the end, you always need a box set and you always need to try it in the mouth doing a mock up. You know, there are different approaches. Uh, this new concept of this uh, scheme concept of uh, doing a mock up directly without any box set. But at the end, you are kind of doing your box in the mouth, you know, just a different way. But at the end, the target of the box is always the mock up. The mock up will give you the yes or no, this works, this doesn't work, it fits, the patient likes it. So it's just a more complex mock up. So I'm not sure if it really saves you time or not, or it's a better approach. I think time will tell. Uh, working with the direct linear technique puts the dentist in a much more complex way. Uh, you have much more responsibility, uh, it's maybe uh, much more work, uh, much more effort from your side. Do you think that this, but on the other hand, you don't have to communicate that much with other people, with the technician? Do you think this altogether is an advantage or a disadvantage? I think it's a different approach. It's a, it's some advantage and disadvantage. Uh, veneers uh, with ceramic, they have the advantage that it's more stable and that you send out the problem of the morphology and the color to the technicians. So you don't need to uh, deal with it. But they might be a little bit more complex in all the things, like handling ceramic is a delicate piece that you need to take with a lot of care. It's more technically sensitive on the bonding and it can crack. So you have advantage and disadvantage. Uh, the thing is, if you do direct, then you need to take the work of the technician. Let's say you need to learn better the morphology, the color, all these things that are really maybe not on the normal daily work, on the normal training of the dentist. So I guess that for doing good uh, direct veneers, the key thing is that you have a previous training on morphology and color that normally we don't have. We have a very basic one. It's critical. Yeah, that's, that yeah, that's why it's a specialization, right? Um, today, dentistry has uh, relies really much on uh, on research, especially uh, uh, or especially uh, bioemulation. Uh, you have mentioned a couple of times in your presentation, your lecture, that nowadays you would use, uh, you would do it differently, because you have newer materials like for or for opaque or, or, or something. You have you have mentioned these. Um, 
do you rely more on the manufacturer's advices or on your personal experience when you do these restorations? Uh, I think you need to take all the information and put it together. I mean, uh, research, manufacturer information, uh, clinical experience, all together needs to give you the guideline box. If you only trust one of the sources, then it's like you don't have the complete information. And maybe something that can work in the hands of uh, an expert, but you don't work in your hands or you work in a different way and it's not really suitable for you. It's, a, it's not that you can just trust one thing. You need to take everything and you cannot really trust everybody 100%. You always need to take what you learn and then apply in your office and then get your own conclusion. And that's the way. And also with common sense. At the end, it's something that uh, you need to use in the office every day. And this is the most important thing. Common sense to understand what we can really take from the research and from the manufacturers and apply in our work and what we can't. Because maybe it's not completely real or it's not completely like a clinical situation. Many research is in vitro, is not really 100%. You cannot take you know, the extract conclusions that you can apply into a clinic because it's different clinical than the environment and the in vitro environment. So it can give you an idea. And with common sense, you need to think of how to apply that in the, in the clinical work. So it's a bit of a mix. I think it's. Uh, I don't trust on the full uh, uh, empiric approach, only clinical, either on the full research approach. Yeah. Uh, I always combine. I'm still a clinician, uh, although I like research and I try to collaborate with people doing research, but uh, still uh, I try to see things from a clinical perspective. And if you hear about a new technique, a new protocol, um, when you see it and you try it the first time, do you use your prior experience and mix it? Or do you, you stay strict to that protocol just to see how it goes? No, of course, you need to adapt to what is working for you or not. Mm -hmm. You always need to learn from your experience. Actually, we always learn more from the errors than from the success. When you make a good case, it's okay. You know it works, but you, do not, you cannot be sure if it worked because you applied very well the technique or not or what. Maybe it was just luck. We always learn much more when we have a failure, when we have a color mismatch. We learn more than when we have a perfect color immediately. Because that gives us the real challenge. We know, we know what to change, what to modify in order to do it better. We can try and change and modify. And that's, that's the learning. We learn from the error.